Ahmet Güneş Sakin, what a pleasure to host you on our show today. Thank you so much for joining us. So, um, can you please talk us through the exhibition? Because there are a lot of works and most of them are recent works. So how does this happen? You must be a really prolific artist. I like to surprise people. I'm popular for my discipline and hard work. I sleep four hours a night and spend most of my time producing art. In my free time, I plan new projects. Even in my sleep, I think about work. I don't dream. During those four hours, I feel and hear everything. My first concern is myself. I get excited about my own work. My schedule is packed until 2023, and I always produce new works for every exhibition. Memory Room is a very extensive exhibition. I haven't had an exhibition in Turkey in the past eight years. I presented my work at exhibitions and fairs abroad, but I would exhibit in Turkey only during contemporary Istanbul for four days, and foreign galleries would represent me. My followers keep asking when there would be an exhibition they could visit over the months in Turkey, both as a patriot and as someone who wants to keep their audience's excitement alive. I prepared this big exhibition as a surprise for them. 80 to 90 percent of Memory Room are new works. A part of it shows old videos and some installations we rearranged, but there are also new installations and ceramics. Whole exhibition is about memory. So as I understand, you're saying that you're focusing on uh, the issue of memory in your recent works. Tell me why that is. Artists are witnesses of their own time and their work remains as a record of that time for the future. When we look at art history, many artists depicted the tragedies, wars and devastation and gathered the good and the bad events they witnessed and passed these on to future generations. For example, Guernica is a witness of its time. My work titled You Were Not There is a witness as well. Everything is about memory. While making all of these colorful paintings, I could not ignore the devastation and tragedies my country has been through. I somehow found a way to connect them with art. That's why my exhibition is called Memory Room. So you think that an artist has a political role as well? An artist will of course experience that role on a personal level. I don't think they would do it justice to politicize art. If you apply a rule or a condition to art, it would not be artwork anymore. Of course, the artist will have political issues and a political stance. They will somehow integrate this in their art freely. They will offer an interpretation but not to please people, but to relieve their conscience and put forward their sensitivity. Therefore, I think any artist would do this not for political reasons, but because it has to be done. As an artist who lives in Turkey during this time, during this important time in history, how do you think Turkey is dealing with the issue of memory, per se? Turkey has a memory issue. That's why there are so many fish in the ceramics collection, because we as a society have the memory of a fish. There are even skulls with fish on top of them. I use the fish metaphor a lot. Unfortunately, our society forgets things fast. We go through a tragedy, for example. The decomposition video installation is a very good example of this. Anonymous soldiers keep firing arms among tombstones, and at the same time, dancers keep dancing. That's what has become of our society. A tragedy unfolds, a flood, an earthquake, a mining accident, or a terrorist attack. And on the day everyone mourns, shares it on social media, anchors are dressed in black. But once the news bulletin is over, soap operas continue, fun continues, and unfortunately, the society's memory becomes the one of a fish. We experience pain when it happens to our loved ones or us. Otherwise, our pain is unfortunately insincere. Why do you think Turkish society is so forgetful, you think? Education is a must for societies. Education is a very important concept because if there is education, then we can talk about democracy, law and justice. Human rights become the foreground if there is education in the society. So, in my opinion, this is one of the most important topics. Unfortunately, when it comes to the education, we are in the bottom of the list worldwide. So, in my opinion, 
education is a problem in this country. You are a Kurdish artist from a Kurd Kurdish city in southeastern Turkey. What kind of a role does this play in your art, you think, your Kurdish identity? Identity is a reality, and it's a right. People are not capable to choose the geography, language, culture, and faith they're born into. So I think a person should be in peace with the language they're born into. Yes, I'm a Kurd, and I have never accepted the term Kurdish origin, because I'm simply Kurdish. It doesn't interest me that I'm opening an exhibition around the world and they call me a Turkish or Kurdish artist, because it doesn't change my reality. As it's fine to call somebody a German artist or British artist, it's just as easy to say Kurdish artist. Turkishness is my super identity. I am a citizen of the Turkish Republic. I was born in Turkey and I hold a Turkish passport. But this fact doesn't change my identity or language. I'm not bothered by it and discussing this even is primitive according to my opinion. A person exists with his or her identity because each culture is actually a different color and richness. When we consider the region I grew up in, my neighbors were Armenians, Assyrians, Chaldeans, Kurds, and Turks. I grew up with their voices and colors. Even though it may look like an obstacle, I think I grew up with an advantage. It was a colorful place to grow up. And for me, this defines the richness. So, any audience who visits this exhibition, are they going to see anything related to the Kurdish identity and Kurdish memory in Turkey? Of course they will see, because this is my reality. And because of the fact that I'm creating my artwork freely and within my art language that only belongs to me, I couldn't run away from it even if I wanted to, because the art I've created belongs entirely to me. The audience sees my colors, my myths and stories. They see the events in the video art. I have one video that is called Denial. It's dealing entirely with language and the denial of it, which means that I am questioning. Because I think the most, most, most important problem today in this country is the Kurdish problem. As a Kurdish man and an artist, I have to reflect that in my artwork. Because I'm in a position that makes me an artist who will be questioned by history. When art historians will be writing about me, and they will, these should be written as well. Tomorrow, my descendants or people who stood by my side and art historians who wrote about me shouldn't be asked this question as, when there was denial in this country, when there was dark sins, what was this guy doing about it? So, naturally, I make this a topic of my art. So you usually have huge artworks. I mean, size plays a big role in your art. I wonder why that is, because we see the same sentiment in this exhibition as well. So I wonder uh, why you're focused on this in your art. Art is my space of freedom and playground. I faced some challenges in my past. When you look at the story of my life closer, you'll see that my father had problems to buy paint and paper for me. I've solved the shortage of paper with cement bags. As a person who comes from humble beginnings, today I'm a well-recognized artist. So I'm satisfied with my successful big-scale works when thinking about my past. I'm not only making big-sized artwork, I have also rather small ones, such as 50, 60 centimeters. But I feel more free while working on a big scale. Because I think there is no limitation in art. And I sometimes wish for a space that is huge and I could create something which would be displayed permanently. I'd like to create an artwork which is as big as the eye can see. Okay, thank you so much. It was a pleasure hosting you on our show today. Thank you. Thank you.